Welcome to the September 15th, 2022 Parma City School District Board of Education meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Ms. Lucio. Mrs. Bratz. Present. Mrs. Carpus. Mr. Price. Mr. Ruda. Present. Mr. Vaughn. Present. Dr. Smiley, can you please confirm that this meeting is currently being live streamed? Yes, it is. Thank you. Can you please monitor the live streaming throughout the meeting? And if there is a problem, please speak up immediately so that the technical difficulty can be addressed. Yes, we will. All right. That brings us up on the call. Dr. Smiley, I think we have four Uh We do not have a Parma Proud this evening. No Parma Proud. Information to the board, then, sir? Yes, we have uh, quite a bit of information to the board. Mm -hmm. We have, first, our report card presentation. So we're going to unplug there, airplay here. Plenty of, plenty of seats, mm -hmm. folks. Thank you. This is my role. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't take that from you. guys on the front row or the back row? Are you sure you Mary? Yes. Sorry, I didn't know how to do it. We'll go. We'll, 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 we'll do it. Thank you for this uh, opportunity to present uh, some highlights of our report card presentation. Um, the state of Ohio released report cards today actually at 10.30 a.m. And if you tried to go on to the board, or so the website I should say, you really couldn't get in because all of Ohio was scrambling to get those report cards. So it is a, a pretty big day uh, across the state as these report cards come out. Um, as we obviously move through any presentation, we always remind you of our district goals. Increasing student achievement, improving transparency, and practicing fiscal responsibility. Uh, this specific presentation will be obviously relevant to student achievement and transparency throughout our communities. We also uh, we wanted the board to see this presentation first, but we have a email uh, going out to our parents this evening at 7 o'clock p.m. and it will have actually this presentation in it. We want them to be aware of um, the highlights and the summary of the report card, as well as our district action plan. Uh, Mrs. Straka later will reference elements of our district action plan, and the parents, our families, will have that as well. We always want to remind our board and our public anytime that we talk about the school report card, this um, statement is actually directly from the state of Ohio themselves. They even acknowledge that report cards are one part of the picture, and they encourage people to get a fuller picture. We want you to visit schools, talk to educators, parents, and students, review the schools or district's webpage. Certainly in Parma, we're blessed to have such a strong social media presence from Gary and Amy to my right. Uh, finally, a lot of great things are happening every day in the Ohio schools. Uh, it's also part of my letter as well to the parents is that you know, this is a data point, and the data point's an important one because the data point for many people is how they assess and they weigh our schools. But if you are directly connected to our schools, if you're a parent, if you're a student, we really value the interactions and the learning experiences we tailor for students and create every single day. And that will always be a bigger part of our picture. But certainly state data is an important point um, because of that fact of the public way of it. Uh, we know that our public looks to us to improve student achievement. Our public looks to us to be competitive in the region. And we'll talk uh, about that as well. We do want to highlight um, some of the changes, and we sort of joked with our district leadership team yesterday that these changes were the results of literally years worth of, of studies and, and committee work. Um, they came out with replacing the letter grades with stars. 
Now, clearly, it's not going to be a very difficult leap to go from five stars would have been an A, four stars would have been a B. So that's a little bit dubious in terms of an actual change, but stars have replaced letter grades. Importantly, there is no, there will not be an overall star rating until next year. So that used to happen with the letter grades and everybody would say, you know, what, what's your grade? So this really does make it difficult to sort of tie apples to apples in terms of comparing report cards and are we improving, are we not? In addition, <coughs> multiple measures on the report card have changed. So we really, with COVID, had a little bit of a reprieve from report cards anyway. But even without that, if you look back, you're going to see a very different document now compared to what you would have seen the last time you received it. In terms of the achievement component, and, and in Parma, we really value the achievement component the most. Uh, because in all honesty, it's the, it's the most clear indicator of how are students actually performing on tests. When you get beyond that, you really start to get into a lot of different very complex formulas that the state imputes all of this data into these very complex formula and kind of spits out a star rating. Now, we certainly have to be cognizant of that and use it for improvement, use it for reflection, use it for growth, but it's the achievement component that you can literally say, okay, the kid passed this test, you can see that directly indicated in the achievement component. Also, the state of Ohio has removed the indicators met as a part of that. They report the indicators met. So if you think back to previous report cards, get about 18 different ratings and you would have an X or a check mark, red X or a green check mark in terms of did you meet that state, state indicator. They don't do that anymore, it's just a straight performance index. The other piece is that the denominator now is not 120 any longer. Could be 120, but that would mean it was the uh, average of the top 2% of the state in terms of either districts if it's a district report card or schools if it's a school report card. So the, the, the average this year was 107.6, 107.8, 107. something. So what they actually do to come up with your star rating is divide your performance index by 107, and that is the actual divisor that came out from that computation of the top 2%. In progress, they no longer will show subgroups. Uh, they do show that in gap closing. We'll talk about gap closing later. Uh, a couple other term changes, and these are really rocket science. I mean, this really took a lot of advanced degrees to change these. K to three literacy has their dramatic change to early literacy. Pretty significant. So I, I hope you I put this here, you know, just so you can follow along. Prepared for success has gone to college, career, workforce, and military readiness. Now I will give, give the state quite a bit of credit in this regard. That college, career, workforce, and military readiness is absolutely an improvement. That is an acknowledgement from the Columbus area that we are far more than just you know, prep for college, that we do a lot of career readiness. And so they have really gone to lengths to study ways to sort of quantify that in terms of apprenticeships and work credentials. And so they have not figured out how to make that into a grade yet or a star rating yet. You won't see a star rating for that, but we, you will see quite a bit of data uh, related to that. Our district overview has strengths and has weaknesses, as we would typically see on a report card. We are very proud of that three stars in achievement, and I say that because, as I indicated earlier, to us that is really the, the truest measure. That, that, that's, there's not a complex formula that determines an achievement measure. It's simply you know, that performance index, and the performance index really relies upon how students specifically did on tests. And three means, from an achievement standpoint, we meet state standards in academic achievement. And I think that, that that is a strong statement. State standards are not low. Uh, state standards are high, and we meet that in terms of student achievement. We're also very proud of our progress and our gap closing. Uh, both have four stars, and four stars indicate that for progress, significant evidence that we exceeded student growth expectations. For gap closing, again, we're exceeding state standards and closing educational gaps. Progress itself looks at students over time. So if you pass a test, you're expected to pass a test the, the, the next year as well. If you move up in line, meaning you pass a bunch of kids, you do better. They actually put all the kids on a line. One to, let's just say, a thousand. If you were at 500, if your test score came in 500, pass. You're expected to be at 500 again next year. If you pass up a bunch of kids, that actually starts to move you up. And so that, that's a really a complex formula. They also look at, did you 
based on a lot of different demographic pieces. Did, did they expect you to stay at 500? Did they expect you to fall back to 400? So you're already starting to glaze over uh, in terms of just my explanation there. It is a good measure in terms of saying, our kids are making progress. So when we think of the progress component, are our students making progress over a year's time? Are we adding value? It used to be called value added. Are we adding value to their educational experience? And a four is a strong measure. The gap closing means, are we closing the gap in subgroups? So our African American students, our students with disabilities, our students with economically disadvantaged status, are we getting them to a higher level of performance relative to their peers without that status? And that was a four star as well. So both of those are exceeding expectations. The graduation component has two stars, and so clearly that's a weakness. I do want to point out though that that graduation component measures the class of 2020 and the class of 2020, I'm sorry, 2021 uh, had some difficulties in terms of COVID and how that really impacted their schooling. So it's not an excuse, but graduation component always lags behind one year. And this data is not for the class of 22. Uh, this is from the class of 21. Early literacy is a frustration for us as well, and, and Mrs. Strapko will talk with you later about that. Um, we have worked extremely hard in terms of early literacy and how we are looking at students who are behind and making sure that we give them improvement plans and making sure we get them back on track. Um, I would also say that you know, we are talking about students who started their educational careers with some large gaps in live instruction. And that is certainly a factor, not an excuse, but certainly a factor. And again, college, career, workforce, and military readiness is not uh, something that we receive a grade on. You'll see a lot of data as you look through the report card, but not graded at this time. Again, just to highlight five stars, uh, significantly exceeds. We didn't have any with five stars. We've got a couple of four stars, which exceeds state uh, uh, expectations. Three star meets them. Two and uh, one, obviously, we're, we're thankful to not have any in the one category. Certainly graduation rate and early literacy, I can tell you already that we had many conversations just today about you know, are we coding data correctly? Are we looking at the right numbers? Are we looking at the right measurements? Because a lot of this is often reflected in, in how well we're, we're following pretty complex state maze in terms of how we report data to the state. So a lot of what we talked about today is, is geared toward making sure we're being accurate. <coughs> Beyond that, though, we have to make sure that we're doing a great job with kids in classrooms and in schools. And Mrs. Strzok was going to talk a lot about what our action steps are uh, from this point forward. Thank you, Dr. Smilek. I provided the board with a color copy so you could see some of the data points clear. I also provided you with uh, the guide to the 2022 uh, Ohio School Report Card. And I, there's a lot of documents out there. This is the document we shared with our district leadership team yesterday, and we went through it. Uh, it's something that, as you're kind of wondering, how we got two stars in graduation rate or early literacy. This will take you through the formulas a little bit um, further. Additionally, I gave you a bright yellow um, document. And in our curriculum committee meeting, the question that was asked of me is, can we see something with like districts? So what I provided you and what the state does is they look at our demographics and they look at our economically disadvantaged, our students with disabilities, our minorities, so all of our subgroups, and they come up with 20 districts that are similar to us. And so what this has on it is their achievement component, their progress component, the K through three literacy component, gap closing, and graduation rate. I think this is a great document um, to compare apples to apples. Often what we like to do is we compare apples to oranges, so we do have surrounding districts with completely different demographics and completely different ratings. So this is for you um, to take with you. So I'm gonna start with achievement. Again, Dr. Smilek referenced that we are at the state threshold uh, in terms of performance. Three stars is average. Is average where I want us to be? Absolutely not. So you will see later in our action step how we will address uh, our achievement component. 
I wanted to just share with you a little bit about what I took our district leadership team through yesterday. In terms of how you get the performance index, it is how our kids are scoring. If they are scoring proficient, they get one point, and if they're scoring accomplished, advanced, they get a higher weight, and that's how your performance index is calculated. Advanced plus, you will see a limited number of students. Those are our students that are whole grade accelerated uh, and are taking a test uh, at, whether they're sitting at, let's say, uh, the hillside, and they're taking an eighth grade course, they're taking the eighth grade test. So we have very few students in that category. Uh, one of the things that we talked about, and you'll see our score, we received 76.8, which is average. Uh, what students are not performing well? So our principals have been looking at data since our uh, beginning of the summertime when data was available. Um, we're looking at our subjects, our grades, what, who's doing well, who, ha who is not doing well, and it's not to compare necessarily, but to talk about best practices. So we have teachers that hit the mark in some of our, our grade levels and content areas, and we want to know exactly what they're doing so that we can learn from each other as a professional development point. Uh, and so this is how um, that performance index is calculated. Again, it's how our kids score. A proficient is a one or higher. And I will point out the untested. Um, this is a component. Uh, if a kid is enrolled here or a student is enrolled here, even if they enroll during the testing window, they are ours and we have to test them. And so sometimes we have vacations, sometimes we have uh, situations in which medical reasons and kids cannot take the test we actually get a zero for that. Uh, we had quite a few students that accessed PBLA uh, and did not show up for testing for various reasons, uh, and so I wanted to indicate that as well. Our achievement explained. So we got 76.8. Um, there was 107.3 possible points. How they get the 107.3 is your top 2% of the state highest district scores. So that will change every year. Um, so that's, that's our playing field. And so we were at 71.6%, which put us in the three star range. Moving on to progress, we received four stars. Uh, this is a celebration for our district. If you look on this chart, um, obviously we wanna be at five stars and it's like climbing up a mountain. Um, our kids are, are growing. They're exceeding a year's worth of growth. Uh, so that means that our gaps are closing. Our gaps are getting smaller with all of our students and our subgroups. And um, it is definitely a significant celebration when our kids are moving in this direction. So we are extremely proud of our four out of five stars. This next slide will take you through each of our tested subjects and it's color coded for you. So you saw the last slide, we're climbing up that mountain and we're at the high top of that mountain with our four stars. But here it lists everything by color. So anything that is like a dark blue, that means almost that it's a five star rating. So significant evidence of growth. Anything blue is above significant or above expected growth. Anything in green is that we are making statewide progress similar to um, other districts across the state. So I want to point out our English language arts. I want to point out our math. We are right where we need to be. Um, even though we have the three stars, we're still right where we need to be with state standards. Um, I want to highlight uh, our fourth grade math, our fifth grade math, our seventh grade math. Those are, those are strong areas in which our kids are uh, making significant growth and we are exceeding other districts in the state in that area. And then also our uh, fifth grade science. And then we also have our uh, our blue, which is all of our grades for math uh, as well. 
going higher than average. And so I say that to you because this is, um, it goes a little bit further than just four stars. This identifies each of our tested areas and where our kids are growing. We have some work. We have some work uh, with any of our areas um, that are in yellow. So that's all grades for science. We recently adopted science at the secondary level and we are up for adoption at elementary. So that will be an action step. We have work to do in English too. We are looking at our novels. We're specifically looking at where uh, we are allowing kids to make sure that they are demonstrating textual evidence and drawing inferences. Um, so there's work there. We also um, have some work in the areas of math, biology, American history, uh, in all of our tests in eighth grade. So we're working uh, through that in our action steps, which I will reference later on. Another celebration is our gifted. We have worked really hard in two areas. Um, we have worked hard in identifying extended services at the middle school level. We've also worked extremely hard in the professional development for our teachers that service our gifted students in the class. One uh, area that I want you to look at is the highest level that kids can perform if they are not whole grade accelerated is advanced. And so 477 kids, so 54.6% of our students that are identified gifted are scoring at the highest level. Uh, and so the other piece is we have 688 kids that are in a subject acceleration. So that's your AP, your honors, uh, and they're moving faster uh, in terms of their academics. Gap closing, we significantly exceeded this with our state in closing educational gaps. And what this looks at is our subgroup. So it looks at chronic absence, it looks at our gifted, it looks at our ELA gap, math, graduation rate, and English learners. But it looks at these areas uh, with our students um, that are listed in the middle. Um, so these are our subgroups. And 15 students <coughs> equals a subgroup for a building and a district report card. And the highlights of our gap closing and two of the reasons why we received four out of five stars is our English learner progress and our gifted progress points. So I wanted to highlight that for you as well. Graduation, uh, this was be completely honest and transparent, very disappointing uh, to see two stars because I know what we have with wraparound services and I know what we have with credit recovery. But it is also anytime we see an area that we need support, it really allows us to laser focus and create an action plan. Uh, and so what this measures is our four-year graduation rate with the year of 2021. And then your five-year graduation rate, what that measures is students that graduated in the year 2021, but it took them five years instead of four years. Uh, and so it took them a little bit longer. And uniquely, we have uh, students with disabilities that in all districts can attend up until they're 22 and a lot of times already graduate and they are still receiving services. So we have to, and I'm telling you this so you understand it, we have to code that differently. So unfortunately, sometimes we um, get points taken off for that reason with great services that we offer our students. So what that does is the four and the five year, and it's again from 2021, Four year is at 60% of the score, and the five year is at 40%, and it, our average is 88.2. And so this is uh, just looking at it a little bit further. Uh, I broke it down by all three high schools. Normandy had three stars, Parma had one star, and Valley Forge had two. Um, I broke it according to the four year and the five year. 
All three high schools, again, average our district weighted score of 88.2%. I want to explain graduation rate a little bit further. So this is the current reality and certainly not an excuse. In 2020, our 2021 graduates were in 11th grade. And that was the year that we shut down in the middle of March and an entire quarter was interrupted with learning. Uh, Although our teachers, we provided the education that we could provide at that time with the information and the resources we had because we were in a pandemic, we still had students um, that did not access um, and therefore did not meet graduation requirements. In 2021, that same group came back to school and they were in remote, they were in hybrid, we had quarantine issues, and we really didn't have true five day a week education until the fourth quarter. I'm not using that as an excuse, I'm using that as a way to tell our story. Um, so you will see here on the right hand side, blue is our district, black is similar districts. Um, so when they, they talk about similar districts, it's all of these districts that are on the yellow sheet, and green is the state. Um, so what that does is it compares where our district is at compared to the similar districts and our state. Um, and it's a bar graph so you can see the difference. Our early literacy, again, two stars. Uh, we, we need to do some work here. Um, so we have to, we need, we need support to meet this state standard. Um, and I will talk about what our plan looks like but I also wanted to take you through how this calculation uh, works. And I know the name has changed, uh, but the calculation has also changed. And our guidance documents for how we report data did not come out fully until the middle of July. So they changed, not they, but ODE revised how we report our data and um, it's a little bit different. Um, so we look at proficiency, that's one component. So are kids proficient when they take the Ohio graduation test in third grade? We look at the number of retained kids. We were uh, you know, extremely uh, happy with having 100% of kids that were not retained, but also during COVID, we didn't necessarily retain. Um, and then it looks at this component of on track and not on track. In a, a normal mindset, you would think when you, you measure on track and not on track, you start, if I'm a kindergarten student, I take a diagnostic test three times. I take one at the beginning of the year, I take one in the middle of the year, and I take one in the end of the year. And if you look at our data, for kindergarten students, we're always growing our students. We move from red to green by the end of the year and it's a celebration. How this measures on track and not on track is, I'm a kindergarten student, I take that first diagnostic test in the fall, and then a year goes by and now I'm a first grade student and I take that diagnostic test in the fall as a first grade student and it's comparing am I on track or not on track from that point in time. And it continues to follow our students as they go throughout the years in grades K, one, two, and three. In my mind, it makes absolutely no sense because our first diagnostic in order for a student to be on track is the measurement for the end of the year. So generally in the fall, a lot of our students are not on track and they remain on a reading improvement plan. And so that is a component in which our, our measurement and our stars are generated. We are working through that. Um, we're trying to figure out the why behind it, uh, but also what it explains is we really need to be solid in core instruction. So we have a very strong intervention outside of core instruction but we need to be extremely solid in our core instruction so that we're sending less kids to intervention. Um, so I will talk through that a little bit further as I get into action steps. 
I wanted, just like the graduation, I wanted to point out where our third graders were last year uh, with what they had to endure with the pandemic. So in 2020, they had that quarter of interrupted learning time. In 2021, they had all the different types of learning. Last year, although we weren't remote, a lot of our kids were subject to quarantine rules and, and missed um, quite a bit of school. Uh, and so yes, they were able to make up their work. At times, we're able to come into the classroom on Google Meet uh, and, and connect with our teachers, but that learning is so different when we can't have them within our four walls. Um, so I just wanted to share that not as an excuse, but as the why behind um, our current reality. I wanna get into the one component which is not on our report card, but it's something that we're looking towards um, as we move forward into next year. And this is our college career workforce and military readiness. And it comes out of uh, Kristen Pledgeman's office. And so it won't be rated until 2025, um, but we continue to collect data and you will see data components uh, in regards to our two and four year college enrollment, technical school enrollment, apprenticeship placement, military enlistment, honors diploma, ACT, SAT, three or more AP points, uh, OMJ, um, so that's our Ohio means job readiness seal, and then our industry credential. So if you click on our report card, you can see where we stand right now. I will say, you know, there's work to be done with our AP scores, uh, with a three or higher. There's definitely work to be done with our numbers of honors diploma, uh, and there's work to be done with our ACT and our SAT with the amount of students that sit. Uh, so we are working towards this um, as part of our action plan. Our career technical education is a celebration. Uh, it is not part of our report card. They have their own report card, so I wanted to share where we're at with that. Our overall grade was a B, um, so that is our technical skills attainment uh, and our end of course exams um, with industry credentials. Um, our achievement was a B. Our career and post-secondary readiness was an A. Our graduation component was an A, and our post-programs outcomes was an A. Uh, the work that needs to be uh, done to just determine the A rating in our post-program outcomes has to be commended uh, because what, it, it, what they measure is six months after graduating, we have to figure out who went to college, who's working, who went to the military, what apprenticeships kids are doing, and if they're involved in a technical school. And Chuck Caldwell does an amazing job getting that data to get the score of an A. Um, so we are extremely proud of this gem, and it continues to shine as we continue um, to move along uh, through our journey in Parma. So our action steps, um, as you as you can see, we have two stars in early literacy. We have three stars in achievement. Although we're at state standards, I want to be at a, a four or five. We have um, three stars uh, with our map, um, which is directly towards achievement, and then two stars with graduation rate. Um, Dr. Smilek sent out components of our district improvement plan, which I shared at our curriculum committee meeting on Monday. I'm only gonna highlight three areas. The first action step to address early literacy is we are really going to be working on the progression of early literacy skills within core instruction. Um, so working on that phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, and reading fluency. Those four skills, you cannot get to reading comprehension until those four skills are mastered. And so when our kids are coming to us from other districts, or they're coming to us and moving throughout um, buildings, because a lot of our kids will start in one elementary and will end in another. We are a very transient district. Um, we have to 
bridge those gaps within core instruction. <coughs> what we're doing right now is we're putting kids on reading improvement plans because the gaps are so big and they're getting, they're getting up to where we need them to be as you saw in our growth and our gaps. Um, but we want the achievement to be higher and therefore that literacy score um, will go up. Um, we are piloting uh, a reading curriculum in four of our buildings for title. Um, I want to collect data uh, before I move towards an adoption, partly because we have a new dyslexia bill that is coming into fruition next year. Um, we need to shift our mindset that we can't just move kids out of core instruction and put in a smaller place that the instruction needs to happen during uh, the literacy block. The, the second action step is ELA and math. So when we talk about English language arts, this was our early literacy. English language arts were speaking uh, with fourth grade and beyond. Um, so when our kids are engaged in those authentic literacy strategies, so they're reading text, whether it be fiction or nonfiction, we want them to be engaged in the text three times. We want the teacher to model it, we want kids to talk about it with each other, and we want kids to read it again for independent practice. We want kids to be able to pull out textual evidence because that is a huge skill on the Ohio State test. We want kids to understand vocabulary words that they identify with that maybe they don't necessarily know when they're reading so that we can reinforce it. And we want kids to be able to continue to draw inferences because from grades three all the way up until English two at the high school for Ohio State tests, this is what our kids need to do. They have to read, they have to annotate. They have to read, they have to annotate, and they have to pull out textual evidence. So we are not only working on this in ELA, but we are gonna work on this in all content areas. And this is directly related um, to the work that our building leadership teams are doing uh, and all the way on down to our teacher-based teams. When we talk about math, there are eight mathematical practices, but we are only focusing on two. Um, and these are the two areas that our data show that this is why our kids are struggling when they take the Ohio State test. They need to make sense of problems and understand why they're solving them. And that gets at reading that problem, understanding the vocabulary, and understanding what that problem actually asks before students are working on the problem. And then once they get their solution, how are they able to explain why they got what they got? Uh, and so we're working a little bit further. It's one thing to say we're reading, writing, and discussing, but this is what reading, writing, and discussing looks like K through 12 in all of our courses. Um, certainly in math, uh, or certainly in science, you could uh, use this action step, and certainly in every content area, you could utilize the English action step. The last one is graduation rate. Uh, so. Working alongside with our high school principals, we already look at quarterly failure rates, but there needs to be a little bit more. I don't want to know at the end of the quarter how many kids fail because that's reactive. I want our teachers to communicate uh, and not assume all the time that our kids are always looking at Home Access Center or our parents are looking at Home Access Center but creating action plans for kids that are in danger of failing each and every quarter. Um, right now, this year, we have eighth grade learning labs. So we have identified last year seventh graders that are now in eighth grade that may be in danger of not being proficient on our ELA or our math assessments for the state. And they have on their schedule this lunch and learn. So it's an adaptive uh, program that connects directly with our curriculum and uh, we also have PASS in each of our buildings so that's a credit recovery program uh, and then we have blocked our high failure courses in English 1, 2, Algebra, Geometry, and Biology 
So at semester time, if kids have failed that first semester, they can start with credit recovery right away and then they can sit for that second semester where they can pass that course instead of having to take it a second time the following year. Uh, communications with counselors and teachers, of course, need to be ongoing. I work alongside with both. Uh, and so, again, it's that active communication. Again, it's knowing the kids that may be in danger ahead of time and it's creating the individualized plans uh, for our students. So I know it was a lot of information. We wanted you to be the first to see this uh, and certainly ask us any questions that you may have. Yeah, so what, what would be at the overall? I was looking for that. I thought maybe I missed it. There is there, one. Is there not an overall? It won't, it won't not until so next it, year. Oh, that not until next year? Correct. Right. All right, that's well, I didn't miss it. This year you just have the yeah. different components. Oh, scramble them through the paper. Uh, so some of these are pretty good. And obviously there are some struggle buses mm -hmm. on the reading and the graduation rate, mm -hmm. I assume. And but what I like about our, our staff is that we're taking a proactive approach. We are have stuff in place to try to improve on these things, correct? And uh, to me, that's that's more impressive than reading what this uh, couple stars we got or whatever. But um, so that just to know that we're prepared and we know we acknowledge that there's a deficit and we're willing to do the work to get to it. So I appreciate that. I appreciate the the depth of the report. It was, it was perfect. It's perfect. So, what he said. What he said. Yeah. Yeah. Well. The proactive part as opposed to the reactive part sure. is critical, you know, and I think you're on top of that and uh, I'll be eager to see the results of uh, what you're putting in place. Thank you for all the information and uh, the hard copies because it's, uh, uh, it's a lot all at once and um, some of this is obviously a repeat from the curriculum meeting so that was helpful <laughs> you know just uh, going over it again but thank you very much and thank you for this mm -hmm. appreciate yeah. it of course yeah that was this was huge uh, to be able to see this because that was one of my questions before you pointed mm -hmm. it out was how did we compare with other districts mm -hmm. and um, so I'd be interested to know really the uh, is how in, in comparison are we is it socioeconomic Comparison. Yeah, it's all size. those things. They, they've got a it's size, it's socioeconomics. Um, okay. It's yeah, uh, students with disabilities as well. It's yeah. it's all of those demographics. So formula and <coughs> that's what the state. Compared to this top twenty, there is you know there's a third of them that are a lot worse than we were, roughly. I think as I if yeah I, oh, you know correctly. I looked at it. It's sort of hard to know some of them because I don't know much about playing local. But right, I mean, right, right. Lake seems like a you know relatively competitive, uh, comparable. Berea, right, Cuyahoga Falls, North Olmsted. Right. Those are the four yeah. that I marked because they're in Northeast uh, Ohio. Right, 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 right. Play local in Ken. It's Glen Oak High School. Glen Oak. Which one is that? Ken Glen Oak High School. Oh, Ken. Okay. Mr. Rudy, you. Mr. Rudy, you got something? Well, no. Um, well, so early literacy, you know, that, that bothers me. Oh, that, that, that tells the whole story on how that student's going to do. So I am glad that you're you focused on phonics. You kept saying about phonics in that because I'm a big believer in it. So that was really good to see that. Um, other than that, we'll have to. We all know that, I shouldn't say COVID did it, or the pandemic, but the way that we reacted to it didn't do our kids, we failed our kids. Not, not me personally, I mean, just as a society, we failed our kids. It's showing. So, yeah, it's hopefully, <laughs> we could get this, you know, going back in the right, right direction. So, that's about it. And it looks like you guys are planning on, so looking forward to seeing how well it plays out. Yeah, you'll have to, it's 7, 7 o'clock p.m., you'll have the entire district improvement plan as well. This was, these are highlights, but, all right. 
Yeah, we, thank you. We're going to do a proper proud so they don't have to sit through a second presentation <laughs> because we're very grateful that you came. Yeah, I couldn't get in the door. I would have been no, oh, no, you're it's fine. It's great that you came. Shirley, you want to come on up? So Shirley is our first, actually, uh, wrecking me this year of um, Parma Proud. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> um, and I just want to read a, a short summary from her principal who nominated her for this. This is from Mrs. Urban. Shirley did not hesitate. She sprung into action after students sliced their hand with a pair of scissors after hours. She applied pressure and first aid, remained calm, and calmed the student who was bleeding and very uneasy from his injury. Uh, the student needed immediate medical attention, which actually resulted in stitches. But this could have been much worse without Shirley's willingness to go above and beyond her job description and, and show how student-centered she is as well. So thank you, Shirley. Thank you. you. My husband, Todd Mary. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much for coming, Todd. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Uh, we'll get a picture of this topic here as well. I'll come over in the middle. Thank you for sticking around too through that presentation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? One, two, three. One more baseball. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. He's trying. Uh, he's, trying. Oh, he's trying. He's trying. We're waiting on you. Thank you, and I apologize for not being able to get in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Nuccio's favorite, a second presentation. That could probably be arranged. I'm pretty excited when you saw the 24 slides that I'm going to go through. All right. First, thank you to Mrs. Strapko. Absolutely. Obviously, there was quite a bit of work that went into the presentation itself, but understand that behind each slide was hours and hours and hours of effort. And most importantly, collaboration. Um, Mrs. Strapko does not sit in her office and put together these plans. These plans are forged with teacher input and with principal input, so we're very grateful for all of your work to have such a cohesive plan uh, moving forward. So similar to last year, uh, this year we will, <coughs> senior leadership team member, will present uh, their goals some highlights of our previous accomplishments, and I will be the first. So obviously we you know our goals, we'll be brief in presenting those again. Uh, major functions, I, I don't often like to play this card, but ultimately I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the district, so really everything can kind of funnel its way down to me and we can make difficult decisions and have hard conversations when we need to. What I'm very blessed in is strong teams that we have, certainly led by Mrs. Strapa on the instructional side, Dr. Schneider on the operations side, Mr. Nusio on the fiscal side. We collaborate extensively and uh, quite frankly enjoy each other's company in doing so 90% of the time. Uh, That's not what they said. 90% is an average. Uh, Mr. Nusio and Dr. Schneider is pretty high and then Mrs. Strapa doesn't maybe enjoy me as often. Uh, the bond issue and consolidation will be obviously a, a major function of what we're trying to accomplish, and certainly I try to, to lead those efforts because ultimately we want our, our principals and Dr. Schneider and Mrs. Stropko to be able to focus on a lot of the day-to-day -day pieces as well. You know, these, these nighttime functions often come to me, and quite frankly, I enjoy doing that. Leadership meetings I participate actively in and lead out those uh, with Mrs. Stropko. Organizational health has been really a, a focus since we started here, making sure that we are uh, functional, that we are a team, uh, that we collaborate that when we have to have hard conversations, we talk to each other, not about each other. It's a little bit of a cliche, but it's something that we've really tried to emphasize during my time. Uh, when you look at a lot of the programs that we've developed, you know, that they come from others. They don't necessarily come from me, or they don't come from our senior leadership team, but we try to foster that environment where people are comfortable, when they're working at their maximum, maximum capacity, and when they feel comfortable to take risks. Our district leadership team um, is also something that I've helped to lead with Mrs. Strapko. Uh, my focus tends to be on the resilient learner piece, uh, the embrace all side of things in terms of the environments in our buildings. Expulsion hearings, uh, I hear those myself. I like to be able to have those conversations with principals and with families. And then policy as well to make sure that we're up to date and really you can't say policy without thanking Kim Hansel who does a phenomenal job of keeping us up to date and on task of making sure that we have updated policies. 
the direct reports, uh, Tiffany and Carl certainly, uh, Amy is also the direct report, very grateful for all of her work, uh, Jennifer Nance, who we added last year, she's our administrative specialist for enrollment and recruitment. Her job um, has really become even more integral to what we're trying to do with our Ukrainian students. She's that first point, and so as the first point, often becomes that go-to resource. I know a lot of the time that she's spending now is helping our families to acclimate to the district. Secondary principals this year uh, will be direct reports for me. Last year they were elementary, Strapko and I switched, so that we're always trying to make sure we strengthen our relationships and strengthen our knowledge of what's happening in different parts of the district. And then Melissa uh, is our administrative secretary. Some highlights uh, from a, in, in terms of an increasing student achievement. Uh, this year really, I, I think that gap closing grade um, with a four star rating uh, really is a strength. Um, I, I have always railed against the progress component and continue to think that that is a witch's brew. So it would be very sort of hypocritical for me to then claim that. But the gap closing is really about specific test scores. It's, it's a different, difficult formula uh, that they actually, you know, Used to calculate this score, but at the same time, it, it does show that you know our, our most vulnerable populations are making progress. That is based on their clear performance on a test. And you see all the subgroups that they look at. All students is actually a subgroup itself, which is kind of interesting: Hispanic, American, Indian, Alaskan, Native, multiracial. You can see the many, many different subgroups that they measure, and, and are we making progress within those groups in comparison to their, their peers? I also think that, you know, in terms of adult practice, this has been part of our identity. And, and this walkthrough piece will always be what we fundamentally believe moves achievement. What moves achievement is better instruction. What helps improve instruction is principal visibility in classrooms. It's how we reorganized our central office when we started here five years ago, four years ago now. We wanted more resources and buildings so that principals could truly be instructional leaders. When we do have to have hard conversations with principals, it's often about walkers. Uh, our principals were, were frustrated last year. Uh, and again, healthy organization, they expressed that, that frustration because a lot of what they were doing was running around with the art sticks trying to figure out who to quarantine. And we really wanted to maintain that expectation that you're still an instructional leader. And it was difficult and we, you know, adjusted and we showed some flexibility, but in the end, you see our, our principals were in classrooms 6,109 times. Now, that's the number of times they actually fill out the form, the walkthrough form, which gives great feedback to our teachers. The reality is that every principal will tell you that they're in often just to say hi or check on a kid or say hi to the teacher and just, just be visible. But 6,109 times, they gave very quality feedback to our teachers using a district and our Education Association adopted and actually it's in the contract, the form that we use for our walkers. When our principals started to, to say, hey, we're, we're really struggling with this this year. You know, we've got this contact tracing and we've got parents that are upset about contact tracing and they're calling us and, and, and we recognize that. I actually polled our, our peer districts uh, and, and not, not, not all these folks, but some of them are on that too. Uh, folks, you know, in our, in our neighboring area and I said, how many, how many walkthroughs do you expect your principals to do? There was no expectation from any of them. None. So, you know, for us to be very clear, at the time it was 10 per, per administrator, uh, per, per week. For us to be very clear, and everybody not only knew that, but was really working hard to obtain it, I really think is a strength of what we do here in Parma. And if you asked me today, if you said, you know, you've got to make sure that we're going to uh, achievement or your, your job's on the line, I, I would tell you we're doing everything that we need to do. And a big piece of that, a big piece of our culture and our identity are these walkers. When we went to principals this year and we said, listen, OTES, OTES is Ohio Teacher Evaluation System. And we said, you're going to have much more OTES to do this year. That's, that's formal. That's what the state makes you do. Walkers are a permanent initiative. And when we said, you know, do you need some flexibility? in terms of meeting your 10 per week, our principals almost to a person said, no, we still want to do this. Even though we have the, the increased OTES demands, even though we're going to have to do the formal state process, we still want to do this too. Because they too recognize that this makes a difference. The only way we move achievement is to improve instruction. And principal, principal visibility means everything in terms of giving that feedback. 
that was a victory. Positive behavior and intervention supports, we challenged each of our schools, whatever medal you had, get a medal higher. And many of them rose to that challenge. Uh, bronze medals, Shiloh Valley Forge and First Step. I want to really uh, thank Mrs. Sibili. Uh, not many early learning programs invest so deeply. Um, if you look at the list of schools from across the region in terms of who got uh, bronze medals or any type of medal, you don't really see early learning facilities on there. So it's great that they've invested in that PBIS model. Many schools move from a bronze to a silver, and you see those there. And then we're very proud of our gold medal uh, uh, schools as well, John Muir, Palmer Senior, and Thorough Park. The gold medal means that you have in place very systematic tier one interventions and tier two interventions. The, the, the basic expectation gets you the bronze medal, but tier one and tier two help you to move into uh, those higher levels. So congratulations to those, those schools. They have really clear systematic interventions in place for our students who would challenge or be challenged the most. In terms of improving transparency, our second district goal, I feel like building our future was sort of a model in how to be as transparent as possible. I will say that the frustrating point, and you've heard me express this, is I think we were very proactive in trying to get public participation and public input. I don't know that our public always reacted as actively as we had hoped, but if you look at, at what we did to try to engage our community in terms of what a master plan could look like, four committee meetings, so that started in January, went through May, with three options each. So we had a one o'clock option, a four o'clock option, and a seven o'clock option. Ten. Board of Education work sessions. I mean, we, we had to, you guys had to just <laughs> take a deep breath every time you saw those agendas come out. 10 times we did this type of setup to allow for our public to see what we were talking about, to see the same data. Everything that you guys saw, they saw or, or could have seen through the work session. Three town hall meetings. Uh, two of those were on Facebook Live. One was in person at Parma Senior High. Folks that just wanted to come and talk or ask questions. We would have a minimal presentation, but the idea was that they would engage. Three surveys, three different surveys, one of our community, one of our parents, one of our staff, 1,615 responses. Now, one way they could have participated was online, but we also had a mail-in survey, and we hand-entered those tabulations. So in terms of transparency, in terms of coming out with a master plan, I think we used a much better process than last time, uh, and I think we can be very proud of that. The ultimate goal, when I look back at my, goal, my, my goals last year, was to get a board resolution, and we highlighted that. We got a board resolution. We got a 5-0 board resolution in terms of moving ahead with a 4-2-1. Not every community has that type of process. I live in a community where you drive through the community and it says, please vote no on the master plan. Many lawn signs say that. We didn't have that type of community pushback. Now, my hope is we'll be rewarded for that in November, and folks understand that we really have tried to listen to them. I always love these things too. I, I, I know that they're a little cheesy and I know in the end, you know, this isn't gonna help a student report card or a school report card or a district report card, but I, I really, I'm, I'm proud that we've been very proactive in sharing our assets. Uh, the egg hunt this year was again a, a huge success. Fire seal movie nights, you know, we had great weather this year and, and just huge crowds, especially for the first and the fourth. Uh, ice skating, which was a great idea from Amy in terms of a winter event. Uh, it was a partnership with the Pharma Recreation Department. Walking and swimming when we can find lifeguards. Uh, this our, again, we, we try, to, try to really help people understand this mantra that our facilities are your assets. And we want to make sure that we share our facilities and make, make really a community connection point with them. Uh, we'll continue to have quarterly and ad hoc town hall meetings as well. Uh, that happened last year, as I referenced, we did them at least quarterly. We've done them at least quarterly since 2018. Um, participation has ranged. Uh, I can tell you we have probably 250 people on the COVID one, um, but often not, not, not quite as, as many, but we want to make sure we continue to, to have that as, as a staple of, of how we're transparent. Safety meetings was an ad this year. Uh, the Palmer City Council was very gracious in inviting me to their safety meetings. Mr. Bond attended a few. Mr. Ruda attended a few. Uh, another great way just to give a, a brief highlight uh, of what, what is happening in the school district and something that we hope to do next summer as well. From a fiscal responsibility standpoint, you know, our, our negotiated agreements, uh, we, we sort of lament some of the 
the ins and outs, or we wish we would have done that, or boy, we gave up too much there in terms of our, our negotiated agreements. But the very fact that we are getting signatures and having a healthy collective bargaining process with both PEA and OC, that itself is a strength. Many school districts, and, and, and I'm hearing about strikes every day from this school district or that school district. When we started here, all we heard about was an imposed agreement. PEA talked constantly about a po imposed agreement. So we have healthy collective bargaining processes. We also come to the board and get parameters. Now, sometimes those parameters stretch maybe our comfort level in, in some way. But I know Mr. Nusio is going to show a five-year forecast in November that, that looks still like something that was able to absorb these and, and still try to prolong that ask for operating funds as long as we possibly can. So a big part of being fiscally responsible was to be open and transparent with you about what we needed and then apply that to the, the processes that we had. We really were very strategic in trimming around the edges, we call it. We really tried not to disrupt um, student services and, and, and you know, some of the core of our instructional and, and social emotional programming. Um, with our cuts, but we cut $1.3 million for this year. We looked at supervisions, we looked at bus duty, we looked at class sizes. Uh, class sizes are still very, very manageable. Uh, we did not, we're not at 28, 29, and 30 in most cases. We're 24 and 25, which is still manageable. Uh, we did reduce some deans, so we are asking our principals to run a little bit harder, in all honesty. Uh, but again, that's trying to extend you know, that ask for new operating money as long as we possibly can. We don't want to come back. Uh, consolidation is a plan that obviously we, we are enacting uh, $3.1 million in savings. Dr. Schneider's effort in both the turning around the edges and the consolidation piece is commendable, uh, very admirable, the amount of detail he's able to give us and, and accurate forecasts and accurate projections. And I think just the fact that, and I think we have to keep telling this as part of our story, we haven't had new operating money since 2011. That in itself, for a district this size, is, is, is really remarkable, and, and it, it 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 certainly you know talks about what we've done in, in terms of you know at our level, but it also talks about how all of our folks have just done more with less. I, I know resilience is a little bit of a cliche, but our folks are resilient. They, they they take things in stride and they keep doing the best they can for our kids. I would also say that if you look at our central office, and we're at 9,300 students. And you compare the size of our central office to districts with 4,500 and 5,500 students, their central offices are at least 1.5 times the size of ours. It has been a mark of, of our tenure to really try to consolidate here so that we can put more resources in buildings. We're at $1.5 billion now in cuts in the central office since 2018. So that, that again speaks to, to our work ethic and our ability to, to take things in stride and, and keep moving keep doing everything we can to, to be the best district for our kids and our families. I introduced this last year uh, to our administrators, and we're going to come back to this um, in our first leadership meeting, which happens in, in October, first in the school year. Evaluation 360 is a way to identify blind spots. Um, it, it's, it's often difficult you know, to really get a feel for everything that's happening uh, in a building as you know, we would come down and observe uh, principles, uh, you would you know, look at what I'm doing. So this gives us sort of that 360 degree look where we're asking all of our major stakeholder groups, what do you think about my performance? And I will tell you that sometimes when if things go really well in the week and I'm you know, feeling pretty good about myself, I'll come back and read the feedback uh, from, from, from some of them. And it's a way to humble, uh, humble yourself, but it's also a way to identify some weak spots and maybe some, some areas that you, you really hadn't realized you might be struggling in. So again, we'll come back to this with our evaluation or with our leadership team uh, later in the school year. But in terms of what I was able to gather, uh, this was to the leadership team itself, so I had 16 responses. There were 10 questions, and they were all based on actually superintendent standards. I want to make sure that you know, the prompts are based on some type of research based piece about what I should be doing. So have I, the leadership team, have I created a coherent plan with limited number of goals? Kind of nailed that one. Um, <laughs> that would be our three goals that we've really worked to expound upon in our time. From a low perspective, um, I think the professional development is something that they uh, would probably ask 
us to improve upon a little bit more. And so that's something that we use to reflect on. Um, handling the administrative academies this year and trying to make that as, as relevant and, and practical as possible for them. Our parents uh, really liked uh, our communication style. They felt that we communicate effectively and openly. That was the high uh, in terms of the 10 questions that we asked. The low uh, was actually sort of opposite of what the administrator said, have created a clear plan with a limited number of goals. And so that tells me that I think we probably need to do a better job of explaining, here's what our goals are. There's a reason why tonight I attached the district improvement plan. Because uh, we've, we've referenced it in the past, but now you have it as parents. How many are gonna read it? Who knows? But in terms of really trying to communicate and be open and transparent, it's another step to take to say that, okay, we, we hear you, and we can do a better job of communicating that plan. Our classified um, felt that we do, a, that I do a, a good job of providing full access and opportunity to all students, um, and, and that was the, the high point for them. The low point for them was a willingness to collaborate with classified staff, and so that, I think that's a piece that I have to keep working at and look for ways to identify um, ways to collaborate because I think it's important that they they do interact uh, that we do interact and try to collaboratively problem solve from a certified perspective uh, again full access and opportunity to students so uh, it's definitely something that's been a common response in terms of classified and certified the low point was the high quality professional development so again that, that's I will tell you and, and, and just candidly that's a tough one um, you know folks often say we want just time to work in the classroom time to collaborate with our peers, and that, that's, that's important. But we've also, we also have to find ways to have you know, research-based instruction as sort of a, a, a core that we come back to. And so it's a tough balance between giving people just time to work, but also making sure that we're, we're always cutting edge in terms of getting our, our, our pedagogy in front of them. I did want to share a few fun comments, um, just because you know, it's 7.05, you need to laugh. Uh, so when I talked about you know asking you know, to be humble, never liked his performance as superintendent. He has an arrogant tone when talking to people. He flaunts his so-called doctor status. The fact that he was maskless at both vaccine events for the kids last year showed what he really thought. We'll skip through some of that. I would vote for someone else for the next time without a fake doctor in front of their name. Just because you attended school for 12 years doesn't mean you can make good decisions. I didn't know you were going to read the one I said. <laughs> well played. Sorry. Um, I, I'm laughing about this, but at the same time, I, I, that is a point I try to, I, I know that sometimes, especially in group settings, I can come across as arrogance, and I, I, I know that that's something that I have to be cognizant of. And so, you know, Tiffany humbles me very well, very often. This one might have been my favorite. It's time to pack your hags, Chucky. Uh, came from one of our parents. So I'm thinking the person meant bad. Okay, I was kidding. Yeah, but it came through that way, so. Uh, it's a little different than that one. <laughs> humbling, humbling. Right, Goal this, one. Can I ask, are these all anonymous? Yeah, yeah. You can, you, you can see who responded, but it, it doesn't match it up with the email address. So, yeah, completely anonymous. Uh, my first goal this year is to pass issue nine. I, I mean, I, I think you know, issue nine is, really a critical part of the future of our district. Um, I, you know, the action steps, I, I didn't really want to go through everything we're doing, but what I think that we're doing in terms of improvements from the last time we went through this, so I, everything up there is, is, is sort of deep, like broaden the tent, like Mark was able to get me at the Republican Club, that was great, the other night I was at Divinity Lutheran, that was great. You know, I continue to say, we'll go anywhere and talk to anybody. Get us a group of two or three or four in your living room. We'll come and we'll explain these things and we'll show the models and show the renderings. Uh, I, I always think that those person-to-person -person contacts are critically important. I think this year we've, we've broadened the tent a little bit in terms of the folks that we're speaking to and I'm, I'm grateful for those opportunities. We'll actually have um, advertisements on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Cleveland.com, which are really exciting. Uh, obviously two of those are, are broadcast, but Cleveland.com will be the little, little digital ads. We'll have a billboard on Broadview and Ridge, um, which is exciting. Uh, knock and drops, I think, is something that we, we've kind of gotten out of and, and let people just do drops. Yeah, not Broadway and Ridge. Uh, no. Not, yeah, not the intersection. Like, 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 you know, one on Broadway and one on Broadway. We are asking people to knock this year, which is different from what I mean, we, we kind of let people just drop. We really want people to 
knock on the door and have a brief conversation. We're not making the routes long. Uh, we've, I did one the other night, it took about two hours to get many people to answer the door, but the six people I, that did interact, I think that means something. Um, and student visibility, and, and Tiffany's leading that, and I'm grateful for that in terms of getting kids involved. Ordered a, a lot of t-shirts from our political action committee, not from our general fund, uh, to make sure that you know, they're gonna be on street corners and hold up signs, and we really want to show that ultimately this is about kids. I mean, it's brick, brick and mortar, but really everything we do is about making things better for kids, and that's, that's what we're really trying to focus on on issue nine as well. The second one is actually no different from last year, but given the amount of work that we have in the district to consolidate effectively and efficiently, to hopefully look at you know, building a new high school effectively and efficiently, I really didn't want to push the envelope a whole lot in terms of new programs this year, but PAGE is something that we identified last year, part of Parma Academy of Gift Enrichment, and really got a very positive response from parents, from our board, from some of our administrators in terms of really coming up with that elite gifted school program. Uh, right now we have Tiffany Buchanan who is sort of on a stipend work to try to lead some of that. Uh, Tiffany Stropko and I are working with her as well. Um, we, that will be in, in existence in Parma Park next year. And so we want to make sure that we're continuing to develop that throughout this year uh, so that it's ready to be a, a really a great asset to our inventory of opportunities next year. Other priorities, healthy organization, I don't think we can emphasize that enough this year. Um, it, it already has, in some cases, been more difficult in terms of conflict, in terms of people feeling maybe resentful about not getting the staff that they wanted. And it's our job as leaders to project the tone of, we understand we can't get everything we want, but we're gonna do the best we can to get it to you, and then we're gonna have to move forward in a healthy, positive way. And again, healthy organizations talk to each other, not about each other. And I think that we really have a lot of reasons for consternation this year, and we have to keep coming back to that. We've got to be good to each other piece. Uh, visibility, PTA meetings, I continue to, to ask the PTA to invite me to their meetings. I'd like to go to all 15 of them at some point. Walkthroughs, visits, you see my, my board. Uh, that's actually last year's, I didn't update the picture, but uh, I make sure that I'm getting rounds at the different schools and, and keep myself honest with tally marks on my, my office. And certainly continuing to strengthen community relationships. I, I think that that's really critical. Um, you know, when, when we're at functions and when we're, we're, we're you know, volunteering and things like Chamber of Commerce events, I mean, I think that that shows that we're not just, we don't just, we're not just community involved when we have to be because we have a levy. We're community involved because we are an asset and we are a pillar of the Parma community. And I think that's very important to be involved as often as possible. Those are my priorities, those are my action steps, those are my goals, any questions? I don't really have any questions, but I do like how you presented your thoughts and then how you showed. I'm kind of curious about the one person on several of those. I see there's like one that was a negative comment and it seemed consistent. I like on this one. If you look at there's another, I just want to know if that was the same person. Yeah, because they're anonymous, you can't. Right. Yeah. I, just, I mean, I'm just kind of curious about that. If there's some just has an edge there. Um, but I, no, I liked how that was presented. I, I enjoyed that. Um, I'm not sure about the hags thing. Uh, <laughs> for me for a loop. I know it's supposed to be bags, but. Um, so I just, you know, keep working hard. Uh, you've, since you've come on board, since we've had you here, it's, you've hit the ground running and trimming this place down the, uh, the uh, central office. Um, and it really put money into where, where we wanted it. Uh, as, a, as a collective board at the time we hired you. And that was to get more money into the schools and directly to the students. Uh, and I know from the outside it doesn't look like we did that, but you, you certainly have done that. So uh, keep up the good work. Uh, and let's get this, uh, get this bond issue passed. I know we have more meetings to attend with other people. So they're coming. All right, that's all I got right now. Um, I'm just going to say we see a lot of this all the time because we interact with you a lot and we recognize the work that you're doing, the nonstop. I don't know how you find the hours in the, in the day sometimes, but uh, 
we see a lot of this, I think it's important for the community to also recognize how much work is being done and how uh, many efforts are being made. And the reasoning behind those efforts, the reasoning behind the work that you do and how you do it, and how that impacts the district and the education of our kids. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I was, um, you mentioned that you came to the Republican meeting, and just so people understand it, he didn't just come and talk to um, about the bond. He, he actually stood there for quite some time and just took questions about everything that had to do with the schools that, without knowing that these questions were coming. And I know a lot of people that, you know, in other districts, their superintendents don't even talk to their board members, let alone come and talk to the community in the way that they did. So that was kind of cool that uh, came out and um, did that for all that. Can you clarify when you talk about the, because your, your tone kind of went down a little bit, the money for the billboards and all that? Let people yeah, so not uh, importantly, all of the yeah, things that right? I, thank you for that, all of the things that I showed in terms of action steps come from our political action committee, which is separately run, separately funded. We cannot use general fund money for any type of campaign effort. Um, so that thank you for, for yeah, your tone kind of went down a little bit. Like, oh, is anybody watching? Why not have heard that? <laughs> yeah, all, nothing from the general fund. Um, Sean would not even let me in his office with that type of question. So. Sure. Well, that's good. All right, very good. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you both for such fine uh, presentations. Uh, communications, and Mrs. Scarfus is not here, but I do have one thing I want to say before we get started. This, this belongs to communications. So this evening we had the honor of opening the first uh, Parma City School District Museum. Uh, we had, uh, I want to thank a couple people first. There was uh, Mayor DeGeter who showed up, to, uh, and Councilman Kuzma uh, came to, to, for the grand opening and the ceremonial ribbon cutting. Um, but I wanted to thank uh, the people that organized this thing. Uh, and the head was headed by Nancy Fedak, uh, Jan Workman, Linda Duffy, K.A. Archangel, and Marcia Sendry. Uh, also involved in it is uh, Jan Olson, Char Rossi, uh, Tom and Jim. I'm sorry I don't have their last names, but I'll get them next time. Uh, but I didn't catch them when I asked them uh, before. But it was. If you have a chance to get up there and see the museum, it's outstanding. It, it, it really is. They've done a lot of work. They got a lot of little donations of, of the cabinetry stuff. I was wondering where that came from. Uh, it was a Hallmark store closing, I heard. Um, so that was that's outstanding. And this is located uh, in room 109 and 110 of the technical education wing, right across from uh, the Red Reese room. So if you know where that is. But I, do, I don't know the hours that it's going to be open. Do we have it on Friday, Friday mornings from 9 to 11? 9 to 11 on Friday mornings? Then by appointment. And, by appointment. and there will also be some special um, opportunities to get out that might run something special where it's going to be open at another time. Okay, great. Be yeah, that was, it's awesome to see. I, I think you uh, should take advantage of this seeing that. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I, I do. I want to make note that there were some great kolachki in the room. I don't know if you guys had the chance to visit, but I grabbed two on the way out. And they were fantastic. We made those beautiful. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for those people for, for putting that together. It's, 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 it's neat to see. It's very neat to see. Yeah. And when you're there, make sure you check out the uh, pictures of the past principals. It's really, <laughs> it's really cool to see the photos of them. Past principles, Best principles on the wall. <laughs> not picking up that. She's not. <laughs> she's doing a good job ignoring you. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Treasurer, what do you have for us? Can I just make oh, a oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. I just want to make a couple more remarks about the um, museum opening. I, um, over the last several years, I've been from building to building and seen so much of this precious memorabilia of our iconic school district in boxes, leaning up against walls, shoved on shelves, in not pristine conditions to, to say the least. And depending upon the needs of the district, they've been moved from one spot to another spot 
to another and um, with working with Nancy Fedak, um, she's always talked about wanting to have a museum. And, uh, I will tell you that if it weren't for her, we would still have st stuff shoved in boxes in different places in the district. And uh, she she brought this vision to a reality, and she got some great folks to to work and help do this. But if you have any opportunity to get in there to see the museum. Um, especially if you have a long history with the district. It is something wonderful, and I always think the hardest part of any project is getting started, and they have started this spectacularly, and I know that it will just grow and be built upon um, far into the future. So um, please try to get there and see the many things that already are there, and it will keep growing. It's, it really has been a, a spectacular accomplishment by these folks and um, to the benefit of all of us here in the district. I think it's pretty, um, pretty wonderful and uh, a pretty great thing to get through there and, and see. So I just had to give my little commercial because I've gone back to where I've seen it, not in this condition. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Newsom, you have uh, something for us? I do. So there was um, House Bill 110 was passed recently, which says which organizations are allowed to have raffles. And school districts have always been in allowing to have raffles, but in this legislation, they were excluded. We don't know if that's an accident. OSPA, the Ohio School Board Association, is trying to get clarification. So we're not allowed to have raffles. So does that mean 50-50 raffles at basketball games and football games? Are we allowed to have those anymore? Clubs that have Super Bowl squares or March Madness brackets, are they allowed to do that anymore? To raise money? Now, high or any versus organizations, they're permitted, but we're not. So you can't do a reverse raffle? Or is that since Pi does it? If it's Pi or Boosters Club, they can do both. The school district themselves cannot oh. have raffles which could affect a lot of clubs and organizations in the school. So we're trying to get more clarification from our lawyers and OSBA. Well, it doesn't each, like, um, I mean, I coach wrestling here, but I have my own booster club. Would that booster club be able to do raffles? The booster clubs would be. Outside would. organizations, but not the school district. Okay. So I think it doesn't make sense to me. No, it doesn't make sense. I'm hoping that we were just excluded and they're going to pass new legislation to include us. Right. So it sounded in, in what I read about it that um, they're really uncertain if that was the intent or not. And right. clarification is definitely uh, needed so that we can. Right. Because it's still a school thing, the booster club for yeah. a wrestling program or a football program or whatever. I, I would think that would still be included in that. Then you wouldn't be able to do those raffles. Or, or are they talking about. Office staff not be able to do the football full time. There's no clarification. It just right. came down and. Great. Right. We'll look forward to seeing the results of that. I, I'm sure if you're your own 501c3, you know, like pie is a pack, that's right. a separate, you know, it's a little bit of a gray so area. So certain organizations inside the school will have some kind of raffles to raise you know, money to get new forms or yep. stuff like that, or we're not allowed to do that anymore. Yep. I do. So that's all I want to give you the update. All right, very good. Thank you. Have a good All right, uh, PTA report. Good evening. I am representing Heather Akechi, who is the treasurer for PCPTA. Department Council of PTA held their second meeting of the school year on September 7th. We're excited to welcome Jason from the Cleveland Metro Parks to speak about the program and services they can provide our families. On Thursday, October 5th, PCPTA be hosting a family arts night in support of the National Reflections Program at Parma Senior High School. On Thursday, October 27th, it's the Parma Council PTA's Kalahari Night. Hopefully this isn't the same day we're announcing that we're closing school for COVID. That happened a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare. Please join us if you can help us support our scholarships. Just mention Parma Council when booking your room. Parma Council PTAs will hold our fall workshops and treasurer's tax filing on Wednesday, October 26th at Parma Senior High for the units. We will be selling poinsettias again this November with pickup in December. More details to come soon. Information is out now about the upcoming event at the Cleveland Monsters Hockey Game. The event will take place on Saturday, 
February 11th at 1 o'clock p.m. We're excited to be able to earn 25% of the proceeds uh -oh, from the 50-50 raffle <laughs> to go towards our scholarship program. Get your tickets today. We have a limited amount that are sure to go fast. Our next general meeting for Parma Council PTAs is Wednesday, October 12th at 9.45 at Powers Boulevard Library. All are welcome to attend, and if you'd like to speak or give a presentation, just let us know prior to the meeting. We will collect non-perishable food items for the PEA food drive at this meeting. Thank you for your continued support of our PTA units. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chaki. All right, uh, do we have any amendments today? Mm -hmm. uh, any public participation? No public participation. So I'll use this to I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-360. Approval of a written record of proceedings from September 1st, 2022 regular board of education meeting. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-360. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, we'll call Mr. Lucio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Ruga. Yes. Resolution 2022-09-360 has been approved. You know, I'm, I'm like waiting for two more hours <laughs> before I have to say anything. <laughs> All right, so this brings us to curriculum, Mrs. Bratz. Thank you, Mr. Vaughn. I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-361, granting authority to the administration to enter into a contract with the family during the 2022-2023 school year. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-361. Any questions or comments from the board? You two, any questions or comments? No. no. All right, roll call, Mr. Lucio. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Rudolph. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes, resolution 2022-09-361 has been approved. Well, shockingly, <laughs> um, unless another board member has anything to discuss, that's all for curriculum this evening. All right, thank you, Mrs. Bratz. Mr. Ruda, business, please. All right, I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-362, authorizing the purchase of copiers, printers, and scanners. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-362. Any questions or comments from the board? I have a comment. I uh, just want to help people understand that um, th these are nine years old. The expected life expectancy was actually five years. So uh, Dan Saloom and our, our print shop department and our DIS department for, for and the hustle that they do as well um, have really helped to extend the life of these. Um, this, the, this number 70 account accommodates the consolidation that we're moving through as well. So that's taken into consideration. Uh, so we're hopeful for your approval. Yeah. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Ratz. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Resolution 2022-09-362 has been approved. All right. Unless another board member has anything to discuss, that's it for business. Thank you, Mr. Ruda. Well, unfortunately, it's back to you for finding yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-363, the approval of the August 2022 financial report. That would have been Second. We have a motion. Yes, that would have been difficult. Uh, we have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-363. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, roll call, Mr. Nusio. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Resolution 2022-09-363 has been approved. Okay, I move. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm sorry, wow. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it just got really dry. I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-364, the ratification of investments. Second. There is a, um, there's a, you know, they got this catchy. Um, we have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-364. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Nusio, please. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Resolution 2022-09-364 has been approved. Okay. I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-365, the approval of supplemental appropriations. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-365. 
Any questions or comments from the board? That's a big number, Mr. It is. Uh, can you make the larger, Pam? Great. Okay, so fun. We'll make the number larger, just make the print larger. <laughs> well, yeah. 401, fund 401 is the auxiliary fund. That would be the parochial schools. And in the, when we approve the budget in June, we give an estimated number, estimated number, of, the estimated number of students times a fixed dollar amount gives you a number. And in September, we get the actual number. So this is the difference between the actual and our estimates. Okay. So more, more students parochial. Is that higher or lower than? We anticipated. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't do any of that part. That's okay. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Resolution 2022-09-365 has been approved. Okay. I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-366. The approval for the Parma City School District Board of Education to enter into a contract with Benefit Technology Resource for reporting IRS code 6055 and 6056 ACA compliance. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-366. Any questions or comments from the board? We'll call Ms. Newsom. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes, resolution 2022-09-366 has been approved. And now I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-367, the acceptance of contributions and donations. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-367. And that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'm just trying to quick scan of that. Could you scroll down a little bit, please? The top. Not the other one. Top of the list, yeah. There, there. I just want to see the list. Well, as usual, uh, thank you, uh, fine people, for remembering the pharmacy schools with your generosity and remembering uh, the needs of our students. Uh, so some very nice things up there. Is there. I was looking for something specific with that. Is that not on there? The uh, stuff the bus from uh, the Greek church? Yeah, I don't know that that made it yet. Yeah, I'll go on this one. Okay, that's what I was looking for, but that's okay. Uh, very good. So thank you. Thank you, people, for uh, donating. Appreciate it. Roll call, Mr. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Resolution 2022 09 367 has been approved. Okay, unless anybody else has anything to discuss, this concludes this, or finance. So thank you, Mr. Ruda. Appreciate the uh, legislation, Dr. Smilak. You have something? Uh, not yeah, this evening, sir. Not this evening. Okay. All right, that brings us to human resources, Mrs. Bratz. Oh, thank you, Mr. Vaughn. I move for the adoption of resolution 2022-09-368, approval of the following certificated exhibits. Confirmation of certificated replacements, confirmation of stipend amounts, confirmation of supplemental appointments, confirmation of supplemental contract, confirmation of substitute administrator appointments, approval of certificated non compensated leave of absence. Second. I think we have a motion and a second to adopt. Resolution 2022-09-368. Any questions or comments from the board? No, seeing none, Mr. Nusio. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes, resolution 2022-09-368 has been approved. I move for the adoption of resolution 2022-09-369, acceptance of certificated retirement. Second. We have a motion. That was fast. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second to adopt 2022-09-369. Any questions or comments from the board? No. Are we going to see these guys later in the year? Yeah, we did this year? at the end of the year. Okay. Thank you. Oh, they're effective July. I'm for that. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Nusiel. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Resolution 2022-09-369 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-370, approval of the following classified exhibits, 
confirmation of classified appointments replacements, confirmation of change of classified assignments, confirmation of classified resignation, approval of classified non-compensated leaves of absence, approval of classified stipend amount. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-370. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Lucio? Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mr. Ruda? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Resolution 2022-09-370 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-371, confirmation of classified administrative appointments replacement. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-371. Any questions or comments from the board? Saying none, Mr. Lucio? Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mr. Ruda? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Resolution 2022-09-371 has been approved. I move for the adoption of resolution 2022-09-372, resolution to approve the tentative agreement between the Parma City School District Board of Education and the Ohio Association of Public School Employees, OC. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-372. Any questions or comments from the board? Nobody has a comment about this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had the executive session. session already again. Hey, I can, I can sum yeah, up. I, I don't know if you wanted to say something or not, that you're happy with this. So you're welcome. Sure, no, um, <laughs> sorry, I, I thought we could just kind of move right through that. This is uh, the agreement that we reached with our classified associations, and you're right, now that I think about it, that was all in private, and we talked about all of this. So for the public, um, we have uh, tailored Really our financial package um, with really two competing sort of ends in mind. One, we need a workforce and we need our workforce to feel valued and compensated in a fair manner, especially given the financial circumstances uh, that we face with recession and with some of the climbing uh, rates that are being offered, especially at private institutions such as a $14 an hour start at McDonald's. But the second piece is that we balance that against our five-year forecast and need to be sure that we are uh, prolonging any ask for new funds as long as possible. So when you go into negotiations, to have both of those in mind can sometimes be a delicate balance. Uh, we're very happy with the uh, recent approval from the OC membership. They approved this at an overwhelming rate. It shows that hopefully they do feel valued. Uh, our classified association in many cases is the backbone of what we do in our schools. Um, you don't have clean schools without classified uh, folks. You don't have uh, special education assistance without our classified folks. You don't have uh, hot lunches every day. And a lot of the, the work that Mr. Gorman's done that goes really undone without these folks. And it, it really, hopefully they feel that we value them. And that's part of what we try to accomplish with this package. Um, so we're grateful for their approval. We're hopeful for your approval, uh, knowing that um, really tried to thread the needle, so to speak, in terms of meeting our employees' sort of needs and what they deserve, and at the same time preserving the financial future of the district. Well, I can say I'm, I'm pleased with this. And I'm, I'm happy with it, and I think they should be happy with it as well. Um, anybody else? No, you don't have to, no pressure. So no other comments, so we'll call Ms. Lucio. Mrs. Brooks? Yes. Mr. Rudolph? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes, <coughs> excuse me, yes. The resolution 2022-09-372 has been approved. Unless another board member has anything to discuss that will conclude human resources for tonight, Mr. Bryce. All right, thank you, Mrs. Bryce. I appreciate that. Policy, Mr. Ruda. Um, I don't think we have any funds. There are no policies. I see this. Very good. All right, so we don't need that. Part. I move to adopt resolution 2022-09-374 to adjourn this meeting. Hmm. One of you got picked. <laughs> Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-09-374. So make sure your oars are in order. 
Roll call, please, Mr. Nucio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Rudolph. Yes. Mr. Bratz. Yes. Thank you. Meetings adjourned.